years and years ago, some of us with a little gray remember, but the jetty was stopped down at the beach and we were able to save our beach from the jetty. A couple years later, we were able to save a popular park, Collier Park in Northeast LV. We also saved Dusty Roads Park. We saved Fulmosa School. We uh, started a child care development center. We prevented the Strand Theater but its heart's gone from becoming a porno theater. That's right. Yeah. All these people have done a lot. We also got the city to uh, do a study on the toxic waste dump next to SeaWorld, make sure nothing was leaking and coming down the river to OB. <clears throat> We've done a lot. And when OB people come together, that's what happens. We have victories to celebrate, we're proud of. But this has got to be one of them. We've got to keep these doors open. I, wanna, I want you to hear from Anna Daniels, who's a librarian in the city system. She doesn't live in OB, but she loves libraries. She's not speaking for the library system, but she's speaking on behalf of herself. Anna? Hey, thank you. about closing seven libraries with a total of a half a billion items. It would take 5,000 of these lonely book trucks to load up every item out of those seven impacted libraries and try to find a place for them. And the items in your library were developed for your community on your preferences and your needs. Are you going to let them take 5,000 book trucks and, and remove the libraries from our community libraries? No! no. Okay, I'm going to give you one more reason to love your libraries. If you believe in a democratic country, literacy is a cornerstone of democracy. If you believe in a democratic country, free, unobstructed access to information is essential. Yes. This is what your library does. And please keep in mind, of all the thousands of incarcerated individuals in this, in this country and in this state, the common piece is they are illiterate, they are functionally illiterate, we spend $20,000 a year to incarcerate them in a bloated penal institutions that are privatized, and these people don't come out with an MBA. So that's another reason you want to love your libraries. And I want you to also remember, our mayor came up through the ranks of the police. They are used to dealing with criminals, not citizens. So you cannot treat the citizenry, Richard versus uh, when I woke up after the day after the council meeting, talk about the whiff of napalm in the morning. The mayor is trying to tell you that the criminals are the penny, the people that are getting a penny. And he said that the police and fire can have an increase which it, which it, it, it increases our pension um, debt. Um, so it's not about the workforce. And when you think about this, the people that are working in these libraries um, are not to be confused with this kind of hate association. So now, what I'm going to ask you to do, we need to have a common strategy. One of them is, if you're going to make a phone call, call the mayor and let him feel the love. That is very important, of course, to let your council members know. The other thing is, is we must be completely unified on not permitting any cuts to the library budget. And why? Because it has been cut every year. The hours have already been reduced. Staff has already been reduced. The material budget has already been cut. So let's not accept the agenda that somebody else is giving to us. Let's take control of the agenda of our communities and say, find the money for libraries, for park and recreation from some other place. And you know what? We can do it. And my last and in the words of uh, John Kennedy, Ishbin Obishan. Thank you.